Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth, Jesus, the he, from that forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem. Now this is after Peter's confession, thou art the Son of God, thou art the Christ, in the city of Pan. And the next step now is to his disciples, after he's told them, don't tell anybody I'm Jesus the Christ. Now, to his disciples, he's beginning to tell them of Isaiah 53, the suffering prophet, uh, yeah, the suffering prophet, the Messiah that suffers, must go into Jerusalem, and this is all according to the scripture. He's actually, he dies outside of Jerusalem, and suffer many things, Isaiah 53, of the elders, those are the, the old we call them elderly, we call them ancient, we call them old parts, we call them, you know. These would be the elder, the, or the elder, the word, the older ones that are in charge. They've been there for a while, they've been there for a long time. Not like America, you know, where you promote someone because of race, color, and sex. You don't promote them by their skills. And then you wonder why America is a big flop. You know, this guy got the you got the president in a position of the company because he's. Meanwhile, the guy now under the ladder, he's he's got the credentials. He's the one that works. He's the one that you know. Well, he's a white American Protestant male, and the law doesn't protect him. But we know equal rights. Everybody got freedom, and everybody's got yeah, right, sure. And the chief priest, known as the plural, that's the high priest of the Old Testament. That is Aaron's position itself. But where the question is, where did the S come from? And you got churches today, even little churches. You got the pastor, you got the associate pastor, you got the assistant to the pastor. Are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me? You wouldn't survive up north in New England church. One old, hard-working pastor on a Tuesday is ripping up a, 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 one of his elderly uh, women member of the church toilet and putting a new one in because it has gone bad. He runs down to the, to the water company and tries to figure out, you know, you overcharged me on the bill. He's probably the one that will go over to the hardware store to get that special bulb that somebody would say, Pastor, you know that bulb over there is... <laughs> they said, Pastor, what size bulb, what kind of bulb do you get for that? All right, I'll get it this week and when I'm back midweek or Sunday. You know, it's always Pastor that's out. Pastor that doesn't work. Pastor, what about this? Pastor, the toilet is clogged. Pastor, the door don't work. How about... <laughs> That's the New England church. I'm a New England Yankee. I've been down south, sort of. Florida really ain't south. I, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the, the, these churches down here. We've had family problems. I'm not going to get into it. And we've had only one pastor so far talk to us. One of you great, proud preachers that goes all over the place. He didn't offer a hand to help us. Uh, maybe, maybe the court says, maybe the city has no counseling you need. Meanwhile, don't come back to my church if you don't like my decoration. Okay? It's, you don't like what I just said? I'm picking on you. I'm driving you to the ground. It's only the truth. And scribes, these are the people in charge of the of the documents. These are people in charge of the, of the scriptures. They are in charge of the scrolls. You know, when the, when the when the priest comes and say, listen, I need the Isaiah scroll, that guy knows where right where it is. They would rewrite the scripture when the scroll got bad, got old. And they had principles they followed. And be killed. 
All right, so the question comes, and I, 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 got, I want to do a message today about this. Who killed Jesus? Jesus' own word said the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Judeans will kill him. Yeah, I know Rome and the Rome execution of, of the, uh, the cross, crucifixion, all that. But it was the Jews that said, crucify him. And the Jews did not put the nails in the hand. They had it done. So a mafia figure, uh, whatever you call the black gang, things like that, when you hire a hit on somebody, you may not have pulled the trigger. You may not have got the, the cement boot. You may not did the rope. Or you may not have stepped. You may not have shot. But if you ordered it, you killed. Because our thoughts, Matthew 5, 28, whoever looks upon a woman, whoever looks upon a woman, uh, oh boy, I forget Whoso looked upon a woman, I think, is lust after her in his heart, has committed adultery with her. He didn't commit adultery with her, but he did. The Jews are going to, going to put the Roman government to killing Jesus. Jesus said those are Hebrew leaders, those are the Hebrew chief priests, those are Hebrew scribes, will be killed. When we get to the Acts later, we're going to hear Peter say it. We're going to hear Paul say it. And then you get these churches. Well, you know, Jesus laid... Yeah, Jesus laid down his life. But he was killed by a group of people. He came unto his own, his own received them not. This is like, well, you know, December 25th is not Jesus' birthday, but we're going to celebrate anyway. You know, the Jews didn't kill Jesus. The Romans didn't kill Jesus. Jesus laid down his life. Yeah, he laid down his life as the Passover sheep, but who did the killing? Herod ordered all the children under two years old murdered. All the children under two years old, well, not all, because Jesus was survived, were murdered. Herod didn't do it, but man, when he stands before God, he's got blood in his hands. Pharaoh ordered... All the male children that were born to be cast in the Nile River to die in all kinds of wicked kind of deaths and all that. Herod didn't throw no baby in the water. And he ordered it. He's going to stand to the judgment of God. He's going to have blood on his fingers. I think the American Civil War and some of the wars we've been in, I think the United States president is going to stand with blood on their hands because we ought not to go into war. That was no purpose to go into a war. And then you lie to the people why you went. It, it, it was a cover-up. Your entire government is a cover-up. When you are selling guns, involving guns and weapons to, uh, to Ukraine and to Russia, both of them at the same time. And then you have a draft in America. Every male child at 18 year old has to go down to the post office. He's got to get a selected service form. He's got to fill it out by law or he gets no government help or aid or, or benefits or anything. But if you're a Jehovah crapper and if you're a, a uh, 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 what do we call it, the, the Amish, how come they're free from it? How come they don't get into the military? How come they're not involved in the draft? You know, we don't, but you mean you never had two Jehovah Witnesses get in a fight? A fist fight? Never? Never? You never had an image you know, with the pitchforks going after you with the other? Never? And be raised again the third day. Look at that. The death, you would bury a body, and then the resurrection. There's the gospel. Jesus suffered and died, was buried, and rose again the third day, all according to the scripture. That's the mouth of Jesus right there, Matthew 16, 21. Now, re now people refute the, the gospel. 
They don't like it. They don't believe it. Peter took him, Jesus, and he began to rebuke him, Jesus. What? Come on, Christian. Well, you know, I was witness of somebody. They knock on their door and they yell at me, call me, 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 my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, preach on the street. That's not what Christians do. You're driving people away. How terrible. Why don't you just shut up? Why don't you go somewhere else? Why don't you do something else? You know, I let my light shine. You're destruction. You're causing a God. And you just go with a million quadrillion kind of things that people say to Christians. Peter went up to God, Jesus Christ, and rebuked him for what he said about the gospel. Kind of funny because beginning in Acts chapter 2, Peter's going to preach this gospel he rebuked. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Lord, what you just said is a lie. You're a liar, Jesus. Being killed, being raised again the third day, that's... Jesus, that ain't going to happen. You're a liar. And since we're talking about prophecy and what the scriptures say of Isaiah 53, just of one place. Peter is saying, God, you're a liar, Jesus, and the scriptures are a lie. Because there's the gospel 21, verse 22. There is a man sitting there right there, and he's rebuking the preacher, who absolutely has to be, is God. So, preacher, don't get your pants all hot. Don't get all bothered when people don't like you and they say things about you and blah, blah. Here's God being rebuked by one of his disciples, Peter. And Peter loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter's going to give us two epistles. And you, you might give us a commentary set. You might get the writings of how important you are and what things, you know, blah, 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 blah. Can you imagine here's someone that rebukes? Now let me show you something. Come up to verse 18. 16, 18. I say unto you, thou art Peter the rock. And upon this rock I will build my church. See, there's the first pope. According to the Roman Catholic Church, you can look it up, I did. The official saying of Matthew 16, 18 is Jesus is talking to Peter. He's pointing to Peter. Peter is the whatever words and apostles and all that other kind of thing. Peter is the first uh, pope. And there's the Roman Catholic Church. You see that? Now, now, do you really see that? Or do I got to say it again? The Roman Catholic Church says, Matthew 16, 18, that rock is Peter. That church is the Catholic Church. That's the first pope. Okay? Verse 21, Jesus says, I'm going to be, he speaks. They're going to kill. They're going to raise again the third day. And the pope, verse 22, their pope, verse 22, says, Jesus, you're a liar. Your scripture is a lie. That's the first pope. If that's the Catholic pope, the first pope in the Bible, 622, says, Jesus, you're a liar. That's interesting. Because that's actually what the Roman Catholic Church will say about the Bible. Call no man your father. And that's what you call no man your rabbi. Call no man your, your, uh, it's the term master. Well, that's the Jewish religion. That's the Gentile religion. And that's your secret society. That's a religious content. Don't tell me, oh, you wouldn't call your, your father your father. I, I, says, I never called my father father. I call him dad. My daughter calls me dad. You may listen to my daughter, Dad! Dad! I don't want to, I said, when the Lord finally calls me home, if he tarries on that, he's going, Dad! I'm like, I'm not answering, I'm not here no more. 
I mean, didn't Samuel say when, when Saul raised him up, I was sleeping, man, what'd you wake me up for? All right, there's the first pope telling Jesus, according to the Catholic Church, when they run to Matthew, like the Baptist, be far from thee, Lord, this shall not be me unto thee. Jesus, you're a liar. You know, the Baptist Church has popes too, you know. They're called pastors. They'll treat that man behind that pope or the man in the office of that church. They'll treat him like a pope. Our great. I had one guy once said, if anybody says anything about my pastor, I'll shoot him. I'm like, well, okay. All right. So, verse 9. Let's go to 16, 18 again. Now, where this is important. Thou art Peter, boom, first pope, and upon this rock, Peter, that's what they say, that's this Catholic Church teaching, I will build my church, the Catholic Church. Gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Even though they are hell, and they are the devil. Let's take what the Catholics say, okay? Now, the Catholics say that's the first pope. And verse 22, the first pope says, Jesus, you're a liar. Now, what's Jesus say? But he, but he turned, Jesus, and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. That's your first pope? Really? Jesus just called your Pope, your teachings, out of the doctors of your church, the Catholic Cyclopedia, denies what Jesus says. Jesus says, you are Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that are of God, but the things that be of man. Okay, your first Pope. He, he denies the word of God. He denies God. Satan, you offend Jesus. You're not there for God. You're there for man. That's your first pull. Now let me tell you something. There are, what, 39 chapters in the Old Testament? I think it is. I don't know what 39 plus 16 is. 55 chapters. You get 55 chapters if my math is correct. It may not be. And you're going to say, you know what? There's something wrong with this doctrine. The Bible just said something. And my church said something else. This is why the church does not want you to read your Bible. This is why the church has killed Christians. So when you drive by, you're supposed to pray for it. This is why they killed Christians with the Word of God Bibles. Tyndale. Because of the Bible. <clears throat> the Catholic Church has spent periods of time in church history murdering Christians over one thing, the Word of God. And we're not talking about but their uh, sacraments. But tonight, Jesus said something, 21, the Pope, Catholic Church, says, you're a liar. And Jesus says to the Pope, you're Satan, you offend me, and you only care about man. You don't care about God. Look at that. That's what it is. Now, if you would go run to your priest, he will give you, you know, he'll give you the tradition. And then he will tell you tradition overrides the Bible. That the Pope has more authority than the Holy Spirit of the Word of God. Don't tell me. I, I dealt with the Catholics. I come out of Catholic. Alright, Jesus said, I'm going to be killed, death, 
definitely going to be married, and the resurrection, third day. That's what Paul says, 1 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11. I know it's there. All right, there's the gospel. Peter rebukes the man Peter. Now we're away from the Catholic Church. The man Peter rebukes him. You know why? Because he loves Jesus. Listen, my wife Lisa, I love my wife Lisa. She had stage four breast cancer. There was a point she knew she was going to die, but she didn't tell us. I would not believe it. Even as the days came to the end, I didn't want it to happen. There were times I got mad at the doctor, and when I said, well, what's stage four? And he told me, and he gave me that look. And she's not going to live. I didn't want to hear it. The chemo, the radiation is going to work. We're going to pray. We're going to kneel down in the hospital and we're going to get yelled at for praying. We're going to get every... Listen, when my wife was sick, I had through Facebook, I had people all over the world. I had to go look on a map to figure out where some of those people were. Praying for my wife. I love my wife. I still do. I didn't want her to die. And it was like stage four cancer. The, 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 you know, they say, well, there's no prophets. You're going to die. That's a prophecy. Unless God intervenes and God gives you a miracle, and it does happen. Peter loves the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see that later in John, at the end of John. And the love of Peter is... How dare you say you're going to be killed? You're God. You're the, you're the Christ. Man's going to kill you? Now, come on, think about it. If you believe Jesus is God, okay, let's look at the thinking. I mean, I know everybody gets Peter in the mud hole, but he said, save me, and Jesus pulled him out. If you're God, Jesus, and he is, how is man going to kill you? Think about that. Now, in the reality, how can you kill God? Now, the Roman and Greek gods, you can kill them. Uh, the, the werewolf, you need a silver bullet. Uh, the the, the dra uh, Dracula, you need a wooden stake. Superman has kryptonite. I don't know about the others, man. It's the ones I know. How are you going to kill my Lord, my God, my Christ? He's I mean, what's the power that even James and John walking down the street with Jesus in, in a city completely rebuked? He said, you want, you want us to call down fire like Elijah? Look at the power they, they believed they had with Jesus. Would that be the thing you would think about God? You were able to kill God. I know he let, let gave his life. I know it was under his power. But he allowed man. He was 100% God, 100% man. And when all the blood came out of him as man, he had to die. But the God part of him stayed alive for salvation. The blood, the man part, the blood of God was uh, was our atonement. The very fact is he comes out of the grave. He's God. Peter's looking at it like, you're my friend. I love you. you it ain't going to happen. No way. And I would assume that cancer doctors have heard Peter 1622. No, come on, Doc. You haven't researched all your books yet. There's a cure out there. When when you get word that a loved one is involved in a very serious motorcycle accident and he's in ICU and you think he's got tubes and all kinds of things and, and, and the, the, the monitor's going crazy. And you look at that doctor standing there, oh, come on, no. 
my wife Tracy in the hospital. They said her kidneys were going. I, I didn't know anything about that stuff. They said her kidneys go. I'll give you my. I'll give you one of mine. Right away. That was my answer. There is a way. There is a thing. There is a possibility. Mr. Doctor that went through all the years of college and you did operations and you did your procedures all these years you've been in it. And I, a measly little rat who doesn't know nothing but a Band-Aid, I'm going to tell you, you're wrong. That's what Peter just did. That doctor may not be God. Because that's important, because that's exactly what happened. And he says he turned, get thee behind me, Satan. You can have Satan in you. Your attitude, your mouth, your, your ways, your lies. When you lie, you are speaking the unholy spirit of Satan, who is the father of lies. That's why a lot of these preachers, they, they get up in that pulpit and they tell a story. And that's the same thing. Story that the preacher over here said. You only change the name to protect the, the, the identity of yourself. Thou art offense unto me. He's not speaking to Peter. He's speaking to Satan. He is dealing with Satan through man. Remember Ezekiel 28? You talk about the king of Tyre. And it's actually Satan. There are few places in the Bible that a man is addressed and it's not the man, it's Satan. For thou savest the things that are be of God. Thou savest not the, the things of God. That's Satan and Peter. Peter, but those that be of man. You know what Peter's problem is? He's not thinking about Jesus as God. He's thinking about Jesus. He's my best friend. He's my buddy. We're, we've been we've been three and a half years together. He pulled my hand and, and we, we walked together back in that boat on the sea. He called me and James and John. Nobody else. He just imagine, I mean, his little campfire, they slept outside sometimes, and you imagine they're just sitting there, and Jesus will fall. So you imagine Peter just looking at him. That's my Savior. This is the same Peter. You're going to take my Savior? He pulls out that sword, he whips that guy's ear off, and that guy did not move his head. His head would be bouncing on the ground. Jesus would have to pick up the head and put it on the head. <laughs> And Jesus tells him, put the sword away. We're not here to use automatic 45s and, and, and Lugers and, and whatever you call your guns. We're not here for that. He picks up that ear or whatever that ear and he heals that ear and Peter gets mad. I'm trying to defend you, God. Oh, excuse me. I'm trying to defend you, Jesus. Take off the God part. You are not going to die. You are not going to leave me. This is a, a, a loved one of a person for stage four cancer or a severe accident in an ICU in a hospital. I can imagine it gets to the point you, you wake up in the morning, your spouse is there, they're dead. You call the, you call 911, they come here and they say, I'm sorry, they're dead. No, it can't be. Try again. Get your paddles. Breathe into them. Do CPR. It's, sorry. He's gone. There's nothing. Come on. You can't. That's Peter. I've been there. We woke up in the morning. My, my, my wife had, had sugar, had crap, and she's almost in a catomic state. Come on. You got to do something. They pumped the fluid in her arm, and, and she got a little conscious, and but did not enough. Come on, you got to give her more. We can't give her any more. Only thing we can do is bring her to the hospital. We'll do it. And on the way to the hospital, which is three, three, four miles, not even that. 
I don't know. I'm bad at judgment. Pray over there. You save her while, while you're driving her to the hospital. If you don't think that, you don't love them. I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I have two marriages, both of them cancer. I have two children. One is a serious sinner that has gotten right and repented, and, and my, my daughter. Very much love. You don't want to hear the word death. You don't want to hear the word uh, cancer. My aunt is now cancer. I'm going to have a surgery. 20% chance she's going to live. 80% she's going to die. My mom just found out she's got internal bleeding somewhere. They don't know where it is. She's like, okay, I'm just going to go home to the Lord. Really, with her state and all that, her age, there's no sense for them to do operation. But if you love them, and let me tell you something I've learned with two wives, two children, mom, my grandma, my grandpa. True love hurts. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that Jesus, and I'm going to be very plain, allowed man to beat the crap out of him. And I guarantee with all those whips, the beard pulling, the crown, I guarantee he went poof. He ain't up there in that cross whistling Dixie, my friend. And his last breath is to save one man. His last breath is to speak of the care of his mother. And his last breath is, Lord, forgive him. They, they don't know what they're doing. Peter is looking like he's my friend. He's my human friend. And he's absolutely disregarding the God side. I don't care you fed 4,000. I don't care you fed 5,000. I don't care you calmed those storms. I don't care about the leprosy. I don't care about the... You're my friend. You're not going. I will call in the Swiss Army. I will get the elite. I'll get the United States, which is not yet SEAL team. I will get the nuclear missiles we don't have. I will call in the submarine. I will call in the armored tanks we don't have to protect you, Jesus. The only way to protect you I have right now is I have a sword. Gee, uh, Peter would have taken out all those men. You ever wonder when they came to Jesus, they came to Jesus with lanterns because it's the middle of the night and with staves. That's a pole with a point on the end. And probably had swords too. That was probably because of Peter. And they all feared Jesus too. Peter was a rascal. Listen, there are things that John told us that things happen that are not recorded in the Bible. You got three fishermen and a tax collector. I guarantee they four have got along very, very harsh. I guarantee there were times that Jesus had to break up a fight. Because he tells us, you got to love the brethren. <laughs> Evidently, they had some problems along the way. Oh, yeah, Mr. Tax Collector. Mr. Honest Tax Collector. <laughs> yeah, it was you, Mr. Fisherman. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so big. <laughs> yeah, uh, come on, Mr. Fisherman. They had a Canaanite in the crew. One of those men were a Canaanite. That was a black man. Not a Gentile. How do you think Peter thought about that? Did you think about that? They were, uh, go into the, to the, to the, to the children of Israel and not the Gentile. I hear Peter would be like, uh, what about him? 
There was no way that God would have revealed to them. Even when they said, who is he? Who is he? He says, when I dip the bread in the sop, and he dips his hand in the sop with me. And right then, Judas did it. And no one got it. If Peter would have got that night, Judas would have been killed before Jesus was taken. I guarantee. And we've seen it. One time Jesus says, I'll pray for you, Peter, because Satan wants to sit. Satan was interested and in after Peter. And the Catholics say that's his fault. <laughs> Then said, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me. All right, now you're thinking, wait a minute. Uh-oh, we're going for a plate. Peter's getting off and crying. Yes, we're going for a plate. And listen, you don't deal with, I've dealt with lobster in my whole life. Every single one of them carried a knife. And they had knives on the boat. They had knives in the cabin. They had knives here, knives there. Knives. And listen, you didn't mess with them. And I've seen some of their drunken party balls. They get rowdy. So if any man come after me, okay, here we go, guys. Let him deny himself. He's like, wait a minute. Forget who you are. I don't care if you're a doctor of theology. I don't care if you're, you're a PhD. I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you're a CEO. I don't care if you're a bagger in a grocery store. I don't care if you're a taxi driver. I don't care if you're, you know, the, 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 uh, the manager of the store. I don't care if you're in charge of the warehouse. I don't care how much property you own. I don't care how many businesses you are. Deny yourself. I got money in my pocket. Man, that missionary is really, that missionary is used by God, being worked by God, and you, you reach in your pocket without even looking, without count, and you throw it in the plate. And I was going to get some chicken afterwards. I could be doing something else, but you go knocking on doors, you go to street ministry, whatever you to do to go get the gospel out. And take up his cross. You know, you don't realize, and this is like last year, a couple of years ago. He's telling them to take up his their cross before he takes his cross. You see that? Now they know what's going on. They know the crucifixion of the Roman government. You're going to be persecuted. There's going to be death. And he's telling his disciples before he goes to Calvary, you're going to have to take a cross. Now, come on. What, what do you think Peter was thinking? And follow me. Now, is that the church salvation? Does that have anything to do to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? We say, with the heart man believes unto righteous, with the mouth confessions made unto sin. Is that, that's not church doctrine. You got you got a couple people now, a, a few people that are going around the United States carrying a cross with little roller skates or however they do, and I'm doing this for Jesus. That's not what Jesus means. That's not what Jesus is saying. And this is Matthew. I'm sorry to tell you the American government and the Italian government and the Russian government does not put you on crosses to crucify you. The American government will put you in a prison and give you food and, and welfare and, and, and boxing and basketball and TV and, 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 and clothing and the security force. They just got to be locked in the room for the rest of your life, but you're on, you're on death row. Now only a few states will execute. I don't know what the, what the Italian and the Roman government does today. But they don't put you on crosses. 
I guarantee if they nailed people to crosses in Rome or Italy today, it would be on CNN that make the Italians look terrible. With that stupid, I don't know what her name is, that lesbian. Yeah, she did a crime in Russia, in Russia. How dare them put her in jail? And we have to free her by giving Russia a, a arms dealer. And we got Marines that are in jail in Russia. They don't care about them. That's salvation right there. But that's not church salvation. We are now going into the book of Acts, and Peter dies. Peter dies. On an upside down cross. Peter denied himself. Peter gave everything in Acts to God. Now he says, disciples, I know Peter is in 24. But if you read Fox's Book of Martyrs and you see the ways they died. All right, going on still was the salvation not of the church for whosoever that's anybody that could be Jew, that could be Gentile, that could be <laughs> this period saved our laws. You do right, you don't do right. You obey the law, you don't obey the law. Whosoever. Listen, when that woman came. He said, my daughter is, is vexed with a devil. Jesus said, listen, I'm only here for Israel. The bread on the table is Israel. Not you, you dog. Right? Remember that? Now he's saying, whosoever, because the nations rejected him. He just said earlier, last night we ended, don't tell man I'm the this, 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 this Christ, the Son of God. We are now... Over three quarters of, of Matthew. Now we're starting to get to the Gentiles. Finally, there's no church. All right, we just read about church. Well, that's that's a future prophecy. The church does not begin until the day of Pentecost, with Peter holding one of the keys, the Jewish keys of all the Jews that were there with different languages. Now you see the Catholics got it wrong and the Pentecostals got it wrong. That key was, while he was preaching, tongues of fire came down as a sign. The Jews require a sign. That other key, when he goes to Cornelius, he's not even finished with the message yet. He doesn't call all to come forward. The Holy Spirit already came on. While Peter's preaching, Peter's probably got his mouth open. What's going on here? Key number two, Gentiles. Now, this is salvation. Who shall ever save his life shall lose it. It says in John, Jesus said, those that deny me, I will deny them. This right here, Matthew said, if you recant, if you say, no, I don't want that, Je that Jesus. By the way, that's Peter. Oh, he was with him. Oh, no, 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 no. Not me. I don't know the man. Hey, you know, I think you were with that man. Oh, no, blankety, blank, blank, blank. What do you blank and think of the blank you talk? Shut up. Hey, you're Galilean. You're, I told you no. Er, 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 er. Jesus turns around. Peter, what on earth did I just do? Maybe these words came in. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall be saved. He, he. He didn't give up his life. Because if he had said, yeah, I know that man, there'd be a fourth cross. Two thieves, Jesus and Peter. For what is man, what is yeah. For what is a man profited? He gained the whole world. He was the most toys in the end. In the end, wins. No, 
and lose his own soul. All right, you get everything you want. You get everything. Satan promised you, uh, Matthew chapter 4, remember? If you bow down before me, I'll make you president, I'll make you king, I'll make you minister, I'll make you prime minister, I'll make you mayor, I'll make whatever. You bow down before me, I'll give, I'll give you a rock station, I'll give you records, I'll give you CDs if you don't know what records are. Uh, you'll be in front of audiences. Like he told Eve. He just didn't tell Eve, one of your boys coming home as a murderer and you're never going to see him again. He never tells his rock star, well, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to OD. You're going to overdose in the hotel room. But I gave it all. There, there are people who died, they, well, they got fortunes. And they're bound naked in hell, screaming, says, oh, if I could only have a little dip of a bit of water. And I wonder how many bottles of water are sitting in their refrigerator or was sitting in the refrigerator. I don't know if they had any freezer. Some people put them put, you know, in the freezer. And, you know, and they got ice and they some people got some people got a bottle of water it was like five or six bucks. Stupid. And some people got spring water, they got pressure water, they got And you got all the form, you got all the riches, but you you go to hell. Or what shall a man give for exchange for his soul? What are you going to offer God? Well, I'm, I'm going to try to do something good. Okay, if God's a great recorder of everything we do, and He writes down every single sin that you've done. And what is good for you to match everything that you've done wrong? All right, come on. You go to the beach, man. And your eyeballs are fast. And all the women in the bikini. But how many good things you got to do for all the adultery you just did? You went to work and you're angry, you're mad, whether you woke up late, whatever, your wife made you mad, the child, the dog, wherever, and you're sitting there and you are under your breath cussing and hating your boss. What are you going to do good for that? Back back, back in my time, it wouldn't be today. You go to one of the pay phones, you put your, your finger in the coin slot, ooh, you got yourself two quarters. Those two quarters are not your quarters. The Bible says if you find something in the law, if you find something, you're to find the owner. The Bible we already read said if you think about doing something, you're, you don't have to do it. You think about it. How many times have you called out sick to the boss and you weren't sick? There's a thing right now, an uproar on the internet. A woman called out sick and her boss went to, the, went to her house. How dare he? She's seeking legal action. Uh, how good he did! I'll tell you one thing: she wasn't sick. If she was sick, I mean, there I am. My temperature. Now she was offended because she got caught. You know, the Fifth Amendment is for those who are guilty. I, I don't want to open my mouth. I have no problem for the Fifth Amendment. I have the right to remain silent. Hey, I didn't do nothing wrong. I was just, in, I was just involved with the police in the, in the hospital. And I, I told them the truth. A couple times I told the truth. Like, oh, boy, this may get me in trouble. But it's the truth. It didn't get I me. Mean, they thought, well, we think you're okay. We don't think you're going to cause any trouble. Yeah, right. You know me on the street. <laughs> I mean, they, they didn't know I was a street preacher. They would not only lock me in confinement, they would lose the key. Get extra brownie points from the, from the mayor. Hey, we got rid of him. Where is he? Oh, shh, quiet. But what is your salvation? What can you exchange for your soul before a holy and righteous God? Gold? You don't have any anymore. Silver? You ain't got any anymore. Stocks or bonds? They're going to burn up when the earth and the universe burns up. 
There are people, you know, they get buried in their cars. They get buried with their porch. And the coffin actually has a little container box with a lock. You can put, you know, like uh, uh. And when you close the lid, the door of the of the of the little safe is you, you can't get to it even still. I asked the guy, so listen, I don't want to be morbid, but if my wife is in that box dead, what she care? She can't open the casket because all the dirt is on top of her. If the Lord tarries 200, 300, 40 years, the only thing that's for us with the archaeologists that dig the coffin up. <laughs> you know, like the pharaohs. You know, the pharaohs put all their treasures. There were servants that they put in to die in those tombs, you know, to serve the pharaoh in this afterlife. And they even had, they even did their kitty cats. They mummified their kitty cats because cats were worshipped. Why? But they were worshipped. And all the pots, all the gold, all the spoon, everything. They found they find honey and seeds. Well, you know, the very fact is that that stuff is sitting in museums all over the world and still sitting inside of those tombs. It didn't do the dead man no good because it didn't go with him. The very fact is that you've got to write a will after you die for your family and friends, whoever, for your stuff. Hey, the one with the most toys in the end gets your family happy, not you. And you may cause some fights. Well, I wanted that. Dad thought of you more. Look what he... That miserable blankety-blank didn't put me as well. <laughs> For the Son of Man, Jesus, shall come in the glory of his Father with angels. That's the second advent. And shall we reward every man according to his works? Remember that. Remember I say unto you, there shall be some. Now, I put a qu big question mark on this one. There shall be some standing here which shall not taste death till he see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. That's the second advent. You got 12 men right there, and they're dead. And Jesus did not come to his kingdom. We are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come with the rapture, seven years, and then the second advent, the church. I got a big question mark. I don't know what that verse means. It, now, the only one that would explain it would be John. John sees the second advent literally in the book of Revelation. Then he dies. Now, according to their works, every reward man, according to their works, Verse 27, Revelation 20. That is the general judgment excluding every Christian. There will be no Christian here. This will be Revelation 20, verse 11. This is funny how we've gone from the first advent death. Peter denies it for his love for Jesus. All right, you, you got to pick up your cross because the Christian life is cross. It's going to be hard in the book of, uh, book of Revelation. And then he goes into the end of the world and I saw a great white throne. Before that, he returns. And there's a thousand years of peace, thousand years millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Then Satan comes up, boom, he's gone. The heavens and earth flee, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled. There they go. Bye. There goes your riches. There goes your pocketbook. There goes your wallet. There goes your savings account. There goes your stocks. There goes your book. There goes your house. There goes your job. There goes your bricks. There goes your wood. There goes everything. All your toys. There it goes. Bye. Peter says, Peter said, with a fervent heat, Oop. all your assets will be burnt up. You know, it'd be sad for, for a Christian, for anybody. Can you imagine coming home and finding the fire trucks all over the place, and then you turn on the street and you realize your house is now charcoal? 
It was your house. I've heard of churches like that. I, I know evangelists, his home church, they, they kept his stuff somewhere, and the church burned down, and all his stuff burned down with it. Christian, evangelist. Oh, you know, we're God. This is God's house. Uh, Hurricane, oh, what was Ian? Ian, what was his name? You know how many churches he destroyed? Baptist churches, Bible Baptist churches. You know how many churches he destroyed? And then Nicole. I guarantee she did some damage to the Baptist churches, Christian homes. And if you had a Christian, you had a home that was on the on the beach side. You had a, one of the apartment houses. Here in Daytona Beach, they were evacuating people in the midst of the storm because the sand was getting washed away. There was found no place for them. There's no planets. There's no stars. There's no nothing. You look underneath your feet and you see black. You look above yourself, you see black. You look in front of yourself, you see a great weight thrown judgment. You look behind yourself, you are in hell's Walmart. Because there's tons and tons and tons and tons of people in the checkout line. And believe me, sir, it ain't going to be self-checkout there. You're going to stand before the accountant, before the cashier. And every single purchase is going to be wrong. You ain't going to steal nothing. Ain't nothing going to get by. And you can't say, well, I don't want to pay for that. I'll put it back on the shelf. No, 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 no. Everything you put in that basket of your life, you better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I'm telling you, when I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Actually, Jesus. No lost man will see Jehovah, the Almighty God. They see Jesus. Because every knee shall bow and every knee shall confess that Jesus is the Lord. Here it is, the lost man. And the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of things that were written in the book according to their works. That's what Jesus said. Every man will, will get during my work. If you're lost at this judgment right here, if you committed a great amount of sins, wicked, vile sins, you get the worst hell. If you are a pope or a Catholic priest and you damn thousands and millions and billions of people into hell, you're going to get the worst. There are different degrees. A good person will end up in a place with murderers and, and prostitutes and priests and pastors and good other people and upright people and honest and good fathers and mothers. And good children that did their homework. With bad children who shot kids in the school. And, and bad people who cause accidents. And bad people who misjudge others. And good judges. All those who have not trusted on the Lord Jesus Christ in this period. Here they are. Here are the, all the Old Testament ones. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered the dead that were in them. And they were judged. Every man according to their works. That's what Jesus said. In Matthew, in Matthew 16. Because in Matthew 16 he said. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of second advent. With his father with his angels and them. And shall reward every man according to his works. Revelation 20. There it is. Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. You better get the second birth. Whosoever, oh, you recognize that word? Did you recognize that word? For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. That whosoever is Jew, Gentile, was not found written in the book of life, was cast in the lake of fire. There are people's names who are in that book and they go on to paradise. And there's people whose names are not in the last book of life, they go off to the lake of fire. Only ones that will not, they're going to be Christians. Every man going all the way back to, I'm glad time stops before this. 
You think your line at Walmart's going to be long. Imagine, you got somebody who walks up to Jesus and his quadrillion amount of merchandise. Everything he saw, everything he heard, everything he smelt, everything he tasted, everything he touched, everywhere his foot went. All his feelings, everything in that book and then you're going to say okay here's the good and here's the bad your good are out due to bad but problem is a lot of people their good is bad or even then your good is not good enough but the Bible says there is none that doeth good but Jesus right now until the rapture you better put your faith and trust in Jesus and Jesus Christ alone to be saved. It's not a prayer. It's not a thing you do to, for others to see. It's not a baptism. It's not a, you know, salvation is not even an ordinance of the church. It's not even a sacrament. It's your faith and trust in the finished work of the death, burial, and resurrection of the blood of Jesus, the blood of God, to cleanse you of your soul. And that's not being taught in Matthew because Matthew is not a church age doctor. He has not gone to the cross, but he's talking about it. 